don't know. Welcome to another episode of Jim's Love and Garden. Okay, so peppers. These are the uh, peppers that we've put in all oh, about um, three or four weeks ago, and we've got um, sweet peppers. We've got long, long red uh, Marconi. Uh, we've got uh, Mohawk peppers, um, sweet peppers again, um, long red uh, Marconi, etc. Jalapenos, of course. These these four here. Are, sorry, these three here are jalapenos. So basically, they're all pretty much the same as you can see, the plants are very similar, but obviously the fruits that you get off them are quite different. So it's now at the point now, when they get to kind of this size, I don't know if you can see, but they're kind of sort of two inches or so in height. What you want to do is, is transplant them now into sort of larger pots. So the, um, you know, so you don't, you know, you do the least amount of damage to the roots, I guess, as you're transplanting them. So I'm just going to get these out of the way. They're all exactly the same, you treat them exactly the same. You know, you don't need to uh, treat them any differently from each other. So basically, what we've got here, these are just actually some jalapeno ones. Again, I'm going to use the classical um, square pot. Um, and again, what I've done is I've just piled up the compost here. Make sure you've got no um, sort of lumps or um, anything like that. Depends on the type of compost that you use. This is, this is clover compost, but, you know, some other compost you can get you know, sort of lumps of wood in there, or I don't know, some bits and bobs. Make sure you've got nothing like that in there. Um, and it's nice and loose, so it can go into the pots quite nicely, like that. And you can very quickly fill another pot up to prick out now. I've got how many plants have we got there? Five. So we need five, another two. Again, with, with peppers when they're this age, you really can't tell them apart. So, what I suggest you do is. Um, you know, label them clearly, um, you know, so you don't get sort of confused. So, first way to do it, in exactly the same way as anything else, get a um, lollipop stick underneath like that and then just lift underneath the uh, the plant, because obviously the roots are going to go down. What you might need to do is just put your, put a couple of fingers underneath. As soon as you get the first one out, like that, um, the uh, the rest of them should be easy. Now, to disturb the, the roots the least amount of possible, what I'm going to do is basically, as you see, I've pulled it out like that. All I'm going to do is get the pot with a similar sized hole in it. So just put two fingers in like that uh, and make a like a hole in the compost, if you can see that. And then basically just drop that inside that, that hole like that, making sure it's upright. Uh, what you might need to do is put a little bit more compost over the top. If you do plant them slightly deeper than they were before, that's not really going to cause a problem. But there's your sort of repotted pepper. Now, these are going to grow really quickly. Um, you know, before you know where they are, these are going to get really big. So don't don't leave them too much longer than this if you have got some growing. All you need to do is put your couple of fingers underneath like that, I don't know if you can see, and then pull out um, the compost with all the roots and there you can see the roots coming out at the bottom there that's going to cause the least amount of stress to the plant um, and obviously because you want the plants to grow on quickly and nice and strong the thing in Britain is we don't really have enough season really for peppers so that's why we need to start them off early in the house and then um, and then we need to uh, sort of grow them on um, in the um, sort of greenhouse and obviously you can grow them outside as well if you dependent on where you are but what you want to do is give the plants a good strong start a good early start and then you'll find that you'll get the as soon as the plants are away they'll grow quickly and then you'll get some nice uh, pepper fruits 
um, on there in the coming months. The one mistake I made last year is I actually put them in a little bit too late and because of that the fruits didn't come till um, kind of September time, something like that. And then basically there wasn't enough sun to properly ripen them. So the, um, you know, even though I had plenty of fruits on them, um, they weren't ripening enough because basically they were too late in the season to, uh, to ripen properly. So you need to get them in as soon as you possibly can do. Um, if you haven't planted the seed already, um, I think you're bordering on going and buying some plants from a garden centre to be honest with you now. Because uh, I don't think you're going to have time to do them from seed at the moment. Right, these leaves are stuck together. There's a, I don't know if you can see, but the, the seed is actually still stuck on the stuck on this. I'm just going to help this very gently. I'm just going to remove the seed. I might lose the end of the float. There, there you go. So the leaves are now separate, as you can see they've separated, and that'll grow all quite nicely. So that's the first, um, that's the first six um, jalapeno plants, um, or the first five, should I say? Um, so what I'll do is I'll just continue in exactly the same way um, with the uh, the rest of the jalapenos, etc., um, and I'll be able to uh, show you these in a few minutes when I've got them finished but basically that that's exactly the you know all of them are exactly the same basically just fill your fill your pots up with compost and then you know with a lollipop stick or whatever or with your finger take out like as as much compost as you can um, like that with the roots drop them into the new pot and then what that will do is it'll disturb the roots the least amount as possible and then you know your plant will grow on quite nicely so I'll just get the rest of these finished and I'll show what they look like when they've done. Okay, so that's pricking out done. So what we've, what we've basically got here is the, um, the celeriac. As you can see, I've got um, sort of 24 there pricked out. Here we've got um, celery 24 pricked out in exactly the same way as I showed you previously. And then on to the peppers, we've got the mohawk red. Um, so basically seven of those come through. Then we've got um, 29 of the um, jalapeno plants have come through. Um, all pricked out now, and then we've got the uh, the long red uh, Marconi. So I've got 20, um, 30 of those pricked out, and then we've got on the end there we've got the sweet peppers. Um, we've got sort of 20 out of those as well. So we've, we we've done quite well with the peppers. Um, they'll they'll sort of grow on quite quickly now. They're all pricked out, and um, I'll show you these in a few weeks' time when they've grown on. Okay, so it's time to pot up the um, the tomatoes. Now, to be honest with you, I should have been doing this probably around four weeks ago, but um, because the weather's been as it is, I'm most certainly behind this year. Now, all I'm going to do is pot them up into these square pots, like I do with most things. Um, what you do need with tomatoes, tomatoes are fast growing, then you most certainly need a good um, a good compost. Now, obviously, don't use seed compost because that's low in nutrients. What you need to do is use a good, good quality compost because you know you need the compost to be uh, most certainly water retentive, but also to have plenty of nutrition in it because the tomatoes, as I say, are quite greedy plants and they grow really quickly. So this is the first variety, and, and all uh, tomato varieties are the same, the way that you treat them at this point. So what you want to do is wait till they've got the first true leaves, which are these, these sort of shaped leaves. Obviously, these first smooth edge leaves, those are the seed leaves. So wait till you've got the second leaf showing, which are the leaves that are a bit more spiky if you like. And then um, what you want to do is to 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 minimise the, the sort of the damage on the roots, what you want to do is want to go under like that and just loosen up loosen up the compost like that and, and try to get the plant out. A without touching the stalk or the, the leaves, just holding the root. But you want to try and get as much root as you possibly can do. And then with the, the compost not too tight, you want it to be reasonably loose. Plant the tomato plant into the soil like that, with the, the least amount of disturbance to the roots. That's the that's the main thing. So again, I'm just, this time I'm just going to put my finger underneath the plant like that. Lift out, as you can see the roots underneath. I'm not touching the stalk or anything. Oh, I've just dropped that. Like that, so I'm not touching the stalk or anything. And then all you can do is just drop that in, and that's the minimum amount of disturbance to the roots. Now, don't be 
concerned about um, planting the, the plant a little bit deeper than, it's, than it was originally. That, that doesn't matter at all. In fact, if anything, that's going to make the plant stronger. So again, I'm just touching the, I'm just touching the, um, the, 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 the compost and not the stalk of the plant. Um, just drop that in like that. Nice, nice and loose, but you know, firm, um, like that. And that's, that's the best way to do it. So just make a hole in the middle. Again, very quickly, put your, put your two fingers underneath your plant like that. Grab the compost and not the plant itself. Yeah. And just drop this in now. This is the first variety. This is Golden Sunrise, um, which is the, the the yellow tomatoes that I'll be growing. This is this is similar kind of size to the um, uh, the Alicante and the uh, the Money Maker um, varieties. So um, these are, these are going to go into the main greenhouse, and then I have got a fourth variety. So I'll be growing Golden Sunrise, which are these, which is a yellow tomato. Then I'll be growing Alicante and Gardeners. Sorry, money maker, which are the sort of standard sized um, tomatoes. So the tomatoes are kind of, kind of, you know, sort of like that, sort of just slightly smaller than a than a tennis ball, or you know, a bit, bit between a tennis ball and a golf ball, I'd say. Um, and then um, I'm also going to be growing the Gardener's Delight, which is a small cherry style um, um, tomato, and I'll just grow a few of those. Um, but as you can see, I've got eight of these, eight of these yellow variety, which is golden sunrise, and then I'll be the rest of them are just standard red um, tomatoes. So I'll show you these when I've got them all finished. Okay, so as you can see, I've managed to move the uh, the tunnel up. Um, to here which is basically just where the potatoes are going to end so there's going to be one more row of potatoes in there and then then it'll be the uh, the start of the tunnel so I've moved it over the uh, where it was before this is this is basically where the tunnel was previously so what I've done is I've lifted that over um, the plants that were in there obviously what I'm going to do is let these um, plants go to seed and I'm going to try and save some of the seed off these um, these kale plants so what I'll be doing is leaving that row of kale in till it's run to seed in the next month or so and then I'll be clearing off this section here and that tunnel's going to move to, to basically there um, as soon as I've got that cleared and rotivated but obviously with the weather being the way that it is I'm unable to do that at the moment but what I can do is um, I can put in the um, the first lot of calibre as you can see the plants are more than ready to go in the kind of 90s are so big now well, in all circumstances, I wouldn't put them in because the, the ground's far too wet. And um, if you walk on the ground when it's like this, it tends to compact the ground far too much. Now, brassicas do like the ground to be firm, but they don't like it to be absolutely compacted. So uh, what I'm going to have to do is tread very carefully. I'm going to actually tread where the path will be um, and where the, um, where the framework is of this tunnel and try not to stand where the, uh, the plants are going to go. But um, it's not... The conditions aren't ideal, but um, I'm trying to get them in so I can uh, make a start on the tunnel. So, obviously, there's a few bits of weed in here. I'm going to be taking that out as I work, work my way along. Any any bit of weed that's in there, which is mainly sort of small parsnips that didn't develop fully, or bits of grass, I'll just take that out and uh, put that on the compost. But I'll um, I'll try to put some um, of the calabrese in there. Okay, so the calabrese plants are going to go in here. I'm going to put them in rows of four, which is perhaps a bit closer than um, you would do um, normally if you look at the, uh, the packet. But as you can see, this ground is really uh, compacted, so it's, it really isn't ideal to put them in uh, at the moment because walking on this is going to cause problems. But um, I'm just going to work my way along uh, bit by bit and sort of dig it up like this which is I could actually do with a, a normal fork but I'm going to start off here put the first one here now if you put them this close together I'm going to be doing these in succession anyway but as you can see the plants are pretty good they've got a nice root stock on there this ground is really wet now when you plant them in the ground what you want to do is put them in slightly lower um, 
than they were in the pot. And then what that'll do is it'll it'll help the roots and it'll also support it because if you look at the bottom of a um, brassica they tend to rock a little bit particularly with kale or the larger plants what you want to do is give them as much support as you possibly can and by burying them slightly deeper what that'll do is it'll anchor the plant in a bit better and uh, give it a bit better support okay so what I'm actually going to do is put um, actually four in a row here. I can actually afford to get four in. Uh, I'm only planting these about nine or so inches apart, which is closer than it recommends on the uh, on the seed packet, but I've found this works quite well for me. So the last one is going to go about here, which is just off just off your shot. Like that, but as I say, this, this ground is this ground is really too wet really to do this under normal circumstances I would uh, I'd, um, wait till the ground got a bit drier but as, as time is marching on and I've got other things to do as well in the allotment uh, I really do need to uh, get this planted as best I could. Typically what you do is you dig the ground and you walk all over it when it's dry which compacts it down because brassicas like the ground to be quite well compacted and then um, as soon as you do that you sort of plant them in but this 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 ground is absolutely sodden but because of the weather we've had this year it's um, you know we're running out of time I mean by rights as I as I explained earlier the uh, we should be getting the uh, parsnips in today this is uh, typically the time that I do that but uh, anyway I'm going to come back um, sort of nine inches or so this way, like that, and then put that one in there. So they end up in like a nine or ten inch square, I think that's basically what you're looking for. Um, and then as they grow, they'll actually support each other. Um, and they'll, they'll, uh, you know, sort of try to grow upwards and then you'll get an earlier crop. And then by the time these crop, you'll be then ready to put in your second batch. And I'm hopefully going to try and get um, three, possibly four um, harvests off or successional crops out of the uh, Calabrese this year. So all being well, this will be the first of four. Um, but we'll, depends on the weather and how quickly these plants develop. Um, I'll have to see how things go. Okay, so it's now time to plant um, the um, French beans and the um, the runner beans into the ground. Now these are the these are the French bean seeds that I. Um, or string beans that I saved from last year, and all you do is you leave the leave the beans on the plant, and then basically they'll they'll naturally mature on the on the plant. Then all you need to do is split the uh, the bean pods out, and you get these little white beans. Now it is tempting to plant these before now, um, but I always recommend to plant beans in the first week of May, in a mind to put them out into the ground um, in the um, you know the sort of the last week of May. The reason being is even though we're getting this nice weather in the UK at the moment, we still could potentially get frost right up until the end of May. And if you get any frosts on beans, you'll kill them out right. So what I suggest you do is don't plant them out until the end of May. They'll, they'll, they'll soon grow and um, go, up the, um, go up the stems. Now what I'm doing is I've filled out all of these um, pots with soil. And what I'm doing is I'm putting two beans in each in each one. Um, the orientation of the bean doesn't really matter. I, I typically push them down sort of sideways like that. And you want to put them in around sort of an inch or so deep. Beans typically um, that their roots will go down and they become pot bound quite quickly. So what you don't want to do is plant them that too deep. What you want to do is go down about an inch or two um, and then that will be more than enough. Now with, with the French beans you can you can plant um, a couple of these in each pot like I'm doing here and the, you, you're pretty much guaranteed to get both of them to germinate. 
Um, if, if that's the case, don't worry, just put them both in the ground as they are and they'll, they'll happily grow together um, and go up the, sta go up the, uh, the bean poles. Um, so, you know, don't worry about thinning them out or anything like that. Uh, you could potentially put up to three in here, to be honest with you, but what you do need to do is obviously they will become pot bound that much quicker. So, you know, you only want them in these pots till they're around um, sort of nine inches high and then put them out of the ground. Now, what you can do is you can plant these straight into the ground. Um, you know, so, you know, put your bean poles up and then plant the beans straight into the ground and then they will grow um, up the you know what the poles quite you know quite merely doing it that way having said that if you do this what it does is two things one it puts a nice um, ball of compost around the seed which will keep the moisture there beans are very hungry and they will grow quickly and you need to keep the moisture round the um, around the bean at all time um, now if the if they do become dry um, you know you need to um, you, you know the plant will be damaged so what you need to do is when they are growing you need to make sure that they, they're watered if you've had a few days without rain you most certainly need to get the hose pipe out and give them a good soaking because the beans really do need lots of water particularly when they start to flower um, so they will you, you know they will grow and they'll grow for about about um, about two months until they reach the top of the, the poles then they'll flower as soon as you start flowering you need to make sure that they are well watered all the time. If you have a dry period in um, July and August you, you need to make sure you water them pretty much every night to ensure a good crop of beans. So I've got all those in now, that's, that's two in each pot, um, as I say planted about two inches down. I will be doing another tray, these. I'm going to be doing, this. There's, there's 30 here, I'm going to be doing another 30, so I'll have 60 pots in total, so 120 plants, assuming that they all grow. And then I'll show you these in a couple of weeks time. Um, again, these are just like, um, these are just like um, runner beans, so obviously they are difficult to tell apart as soon as they, uh, they start to grow, so do put a label in, saying that the string beans or French beans, whatever. If you are going to grow, like me, both French beans and runner beans, don't grow them close together because what you can get, if you're going to keep the seed, because what you can get is, is insects going from one to the other, cross-pollinating, and what you'll end up with is some kind of hybrid bean between French and, um, French and runner beans. So what I typically do is grow one, like the French beans will be up one end of the allotment, and then the runner beans will be down the bottom end of the allotment. And obviously if any of your um, neighbouring allotments are also growing beans, make sure you don't grow a variety um, which, is, which is vastly different from the one that your neighbours are growing, um, because, if you're keeping the seed, because when they pollinate um, each other, um, you know, you will potentially get a hybrid bean between the two. So that's the French beans. In exactly the same way, runner beans are the same. I'll probably show the runner beans in a moment, but all you need to do is exactly the same thing, but rather than putting two beans in each pot, just put one, um, and then each, each, each runner bean will grow off um, quite nicely. You don't want to put more than two, uh, sorry, more than one runner bean in each pot because they tend to grow quite quickly and um, they'll, 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 they're a much bigger, stronger plant and they will most certainly take over the pot quite quickly. If you've got two, they'll fight with each other. So with, with the French beans, put two, with runner beans put one, but apart that's exactly the same. Okay, so as you know, the, um, the rhubarb um, at the front of the, uh, the patch is, you can see I've been forcing it. Now this has been forced now for quite a few weeks. As you can see, the ants have got in there a little bit. Uh, obviously the sugar in there, but uh, so what I'm going to do now is basically remove, remove the bin. Um, and what I can do, you can see the difference in, obviously if I, this is, this is a piece that's not been forced, um, you can see that, that it's quite, you know, it's quite nice and thick, um, but you know, it's, it, it's sort of quite dark. Um, if, you, if you look at the, uh, the rhubarb that I've forced, you can see it's, it's a really bright pink. The skin on it will be much more tender and there'll be a lot more sugar, you know, so it'll be a lot sweeter than it would be if I hadn't been forced, um, sort of forced it. So what I'm going to do now is obviously take the bin off, um, pick all pick all of this that's um, you know a, a decent thickness. I'll probably leave these thinner bits but these these nice thick bits here and here and this one this one that'll all be picked and then um, I shall now leave the bin off this 
and allow the uh, the sun to get to it so we can actually recover. So the way to pick rhubarb, if you've never done it before, all you need to do is go to the bottom of the plant, which is just just sort of there. And what you want to do is you want to pull you want to pull the rhubarb cane away from away from the stem. So as you pull off, you pull away like that. And what you should get is like a heel on the end of it like that. And there's your rhubarb. So that's nice and tender, nice and sweet, and uh, we'll make some really nice puddings. Okay, so as you can see, that's what you sort of end up with, and that's the that's the bit that should come away from the bottom. So, if you imagine that's the centre of the plant, so basically you're pulling um, that away like that and up, and it should come away like that with this with this little bit there. So, all in all, you know, it's an, it's um, not bad rhubarb, um, to say that it's been for. So, there's around I don't know, I'd probably say about probably about four kilos of uh, rhubarb there. Um, now, obviously, when you you know, when you force it, what you want to do is you want to pick, you know, as soon as it's ready, you want to pick it all, basically, so the plant can start to recover. So, when I say pick it all, you want to pick about, um, I don't know, probably about a half of what's on the um, the plant if you force it. You want to leave on the smaller shoots and let them recover, then they will feed the plant for later in the year, because obviously rhubarb will come again in September. But what you do pick, which is, which is all of this, obviously you discard the roots, uh, the uh, sorry, the uh, the leaves, because the leaves have got dicarbolic acid in them, so you don't want that, that's poisonous. So basically cut cut the leaves off, or, or, or break them off like that, and then just discard those. And then what you can do with this, Obviously, if you, you are forcing it, you'll end up with a glut like this. You can either use it straight away, um, or what I would suggest you do is um, dice it up, and you can put it straight into the freezer as it is. Obviously, wash it, dice it up, and then put it straight into the freezer. Um, and there, you, you, you know, you can keep it in the freezer for up to 12 months, potentially. Um, or, you, or, or make a jam or something like that with it. But uh, that's what the rhubarb looks like. Okay, quick note. Um, purchase of the week. I've just bought a new fork and spade um, from um, from Tesco's. Uh, now these were only ten pound each, and to be honest with you, um, they are they are a pretty good um, design. The top bit is plastic, which isn't which isn't brilliant, but they'll be more than more than good enough to do an allotment. So if you are starting out, you don't need to spend a fortune on um, tools. As I say, I bought these from Tesco's. The, 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 both the spade and the fork were a pound. The reason I've bought these is, is I, um, I bought a, um, I've got some quite expensive um, spades and forks which were sort of 40, 50 pounds each. And um, over the past couple of weeks I've actually managed to break both the spade and the fork. Um, you, you know, we're digging the allotment and stuff. Um, I, actually do, I actually broke the fork around here um, when I was digging potatoes up uh, around three or four weeks ago. And the the spade I actually broke off here when I was when I was digging a, um, a plant out of the ground. So you know the thing I, would, I just want to say is you know you can spend a fortune on forks um, and um, spades, and you don't necessarily need to. I've had I've had um, spades and forks similar to this before from um, you know sort of supermarkets and also garden centres, and I find to be honest with you they last. Pretty much the same length as um, you know the more expensive ones. The more expensive ones are nicer with the wooden handles, etc. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the, um, the uh, both the fork and the spade that are broke. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to weld a piece of pipe onto the uh, the top here, um, extend it up to there. Then the whole basically the whole handle will be then effectively encased in metal. And I'll be showing you that on a video coming up in the next couple of months when I've got a bit more time. But for now, I just wanted some some tools that I can get um, get going on the lot. Obviously I have got all the forks and spades but I wanted to get some um, new ones this year um, and as I say you know these aren't these aren't expensive ones basically you know they're sort of you know cost £10 so they're not you know sort of um, you know they're not going to break the bank and also as well as if, if you've got an allotment um, where you're sort of living remotely from it and you're going to leave tools at the allotment um, you, want to, you don't want to be leaving tools there that have cost you £50, you want to be leaving tools there that have cost you £10 so you can easily replace them if they do get stolen or, or broken or whatever. But anyway, I just thought I'd let you know that I've made that purchase this week. So, I hope this episode was of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below and I'll always get back to you and I'll see you on the next episode of Jim Todd McCartney.